Here are the latest games to hit Apple Arcade since February 2022. Sorry, I haven't been very active on YouTube this year, so please forgive me for not being very punctual with uh, this series. There are a lot of things to like about this racer, Gear Club Stradale. Like NBA 2K on Arcade, it is one of the few original titles to offer realistic graphics, maybe on the level of a PS3 or Xbox 360 racer. It also has different events to try out, from races and time trials, players can jump into daily, weekly and monthly exclusive content, you can join a club with other players, and it has in-depth vehicle customization options for engines, tires, body, cosmetics and paint jobs. I had the most fun playing this one on my Apple TV 4K as it is a wonderful console experience. Now the developer Eden Games should be watching this video as they emailed me the logo of the game for this video in particular. While I have you, I'd like to point out some features that could be added to the game in future updates. I really like this racer, don't get me wrong, it has a lot of potential. But right now, it lacks important content, some very minor too, that other races on the App Store feature. The game isn't set up for long play sessions, so I understand the limitations with adding some features, but I just wanted to give some feedback. Wildflowers is a cozy life and farming sim with a witchy twist. You follow Tara as she arrives at a rural island to help out her grandma and the family farm. The first two hours of the game can be quite tedious as it teaches you how to play, but after that it's really hard to put it down. There is so much to do here. Explore the relatively large map, finding new quests. Talk and build relationships with fully voiced characters. You can even fall in love tend to your farm using magic abilities to grow fresh vegetables, fruit trees, you can also grow flowers, go fishing, mining, you can craft recipes, and it goes on and on and on. The game has a 30 FPS cap on iPhone, which is annoying, but it runs at 60 FPS on everything else, which is good to see. I'm very impressed to see how Studio Dry Dock have added full keyboard support on iPad for this one. Thanks for that. Monument Valley 2 finally lands on Arcade. It features a completely new puzzle adventure story. Don't worry, you don't have to have played the original game to understand the story here. Guide a mother and her child as they embark on a journey through magical architecture, discovering illusionary pathways and puzzles. In November last year, a new chapter, The Lost Forest, was added to the original game that is obviously here too. The game also supports ProMotion or 120 FPS on iPad Pro. I love these sorts of create your own adventure type games. If you're thinking it sounds like Wonderbox, not really. Pocket Build is more of a creative sandbox building game. There isn't really any goal or objective, just exploring and creating. Try out other players' creations or build your own world. My favorite thing is to explore a world in the first person mode. The game also has advanced graphical options for render distance, shadows, anti-aliasing, and up to 144 FPS support. Moonbear said they're thinking of looking into an Apple TV version in the future. I find it strange that Construction Simulator 3 wasn't brought to Apple Arcade, but for whatever reason we have the second game. Build your own construction company and operate 40 plus construction vehicles. Dig. Operate massive cranes. Load construction materials, pour concrete, and cover the streets in with asphalt. I imagine it can be a great game, but holy moly is it complicated! And the touch controls are awful. Controller support really needs to be added here. 
The game has okay graphics, I guess, and you can even choose a custom graphics quality and resolution, and it supports up to 120 FPS on iPad Pro. Gibbon Beyond the Trees is a new adventure by the developers of Old Man's Journey and Aloha. It sheds light on how Gibbons are quickly becoming one of the most vulnerable and endangered species alive today. Players follow a family of Gibbons on their beautiful but destructive journey across fictional Borneo, trying to find a new home away from human civilization. Across 10 chapters, players will be immersed in the behavior and relationships of the Gibbon family, witness the destruction of their habitat by the oil industry, mining companies, and illegal loggers. Each chapter takes you to a new location and introduces you to new gameplay mechanics and obstacles. It's a really special little game with a big message and I strongly suggest it. Balloons TD6 is a tower defense game where you have to pop balloons before they reach the end of a map. Craft your defenses from a combination of monkey towers, upgrades, heroes, and other abilities. You can try out family play with four player co-op, go into boss events, unlock and upgrade heroes and monkeys, and try out heaps of other maps. Ninja Kiwi have increased monkey money earned per game to compensate for no in-app purchases. My only complaint, no Mac version on arcade. This should by all means be possible as there is a Mac version of the game on Steam. Sonic makes a comeback to Apple Arcade with Sonic Dash. You will run, jump and dash through 3D environments as iconic characters. It's an endless runner but differs itself from others with different locations to run on, lots of characters to unlock, boss battles and 60 FPS support on iPhone and iPad or 120 FPS support on iPad Pro. I think this game is much, much better on arcade because you can't buy any bundles, star rings, pocket money, characters and so on. It's all just included. To compensate for this, you earn much more and get rewarded more often so you can unlock everything, I guess. Alto's Adventure has been remastered exclusively for Apple Arcade. What's new? You will explore never before seen set pieces, complete 20 new lost goals, use a wingsuit for a new gameplay dynamic, discover new music, find a new playable character, and experience slightly better graphics and ProMotion or 120 FPS support on iPhone 13 Pro and iPad Pro. This one also provides the ability to sync your old game progress from the 2015 game. All in all, not much has changed, but if you haven't given this game a go, please do. It's a beautiful snowboarding game with stunning locations and surprisingly complex mechanics for a one button game. In Bridge Constructor, you build bridges for trains, cars, trucks, and super heavy tank trucks to cross safely. Utilize four different building materials, wood, steel, cables, concrete pillars, and discover which ones are appropriate to use on certain levels with the in-game stress tests. The game is quite hard. Thankfully, it includes a number of accessibility features to help, such as hints, which show you how to build the bridge. The arcade version includes the free build mode for levels, the add-ons slowed mania and trains, and a Mac version is supported too. Prune has a simple premise about pruning trees but it molds that into an extremely creative puzzle game. With a swipe of a finger, grow and shape your tree into the sunlight while avoiding the dangers of a hostile world. It's an unforgettable experience with a Japanese art style, beautiful music, and no major focus on pacing or skill. It's digital poetry 
and is less about puzzle solving and more a love letter to trees. Moonshot is a physics-based puzzle game. Players control Moon Pi, who is a young moon separated from Mother Earth. Using slingshot mechanics and navigational puzzles, players help Moon Pie trek across the universe to get back home. It's going to take you a while to get back home because there are 126 levels spread across seven worlds. You also have access to 30 different skins for this Moon Pie, 50 achievements, and there is a nice little story wrapped up in there. It's not the most complex game, but contrary to popular belief, there are not many hyper casual mobile games like this on arcade, so it's good to have another. It also supports ProMotion or 120 FPS support on iPad Pro and iPhone 13 Pro if you're interested. This arcade version combines the free versions of Pro Snooker 22 and Pro Pool 22, including all in-app purchases into one game. You have to love Pool and Snooker to enjoy this one, but it's definitely the most realistic version of these games on mobile, by far, with fully textured game environments and full 3D rigid body physics. It also supports 60 FPS, different graphical options, and has a Mac version. And just like real life, I absolutely suck at this game. I'm so bad. Shadow Blade is a fast-paced action platformer. Guide Kiro through difficult levels around countless traps, sneaking past enemies, or you can attack them head on. It's actually pretty violent, especially for an arcade game. This plus version includes all 40 levels, secrets, and more from the original 2014 game. There are some minor changes with this version too. It now has 120 FPS support on iPad Pro, controller support is there but just for gameplay not menu interaction, and many of the blood effects have strangely been removed. I don't know why. I really hope an Apple TV or Mac version can come in the future because I think this game would be more suited for there. What do you think of these new Apple arcade games? Are you impressed or disappointed with what's been on offer lately? In my opinion, this year has been the worst time for arcade since it launched. I'm talking about in terms of getting new original games. 19 games have released so far this year, and only six of those are new original games. A lot of people like to make fun of Apple Arcade, but I'm not afraid to admit that I freaking love this service and what it stands for, premium mobile gaming. It holds so much more potential, more than I think Apple even know, or that the general public give it credit for. With just a few minor changes, Apple could really improve Arcade, but also mobile gaming and the state of monetization in the gaming industry as a whole. Anyway, leave a like to show your support, and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with new releases on Apple Arcade. My name's Stewie, and thanks for watching.